OK, now, the Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, is set to announce the latest plans aimed at tackling the overcrowding crisis in prisons. Now, this includes not sending low-level offenders to prison, instead making them clean up graffiti or plant trees and you know, work in the community. Figures last week showed that prison population in England and Wales has hit a record high. It's such a huge subject, Janet. It's it's quite controversial because you know it's like saying maybe we shouldn't be sending some people to to prison. If you were in charge, Janet, for prime minister, where on earth do you start with this? <laughs> well, I think those short sentences aren't working because people know that they'll be out in a matter of months. Um, we've doubled the amount of people in prison in the last uh, 30 years, so it's 88,000 now. That's a huge. I mean, that's a very large town, mm. isn't it? Uh, what I think you have to do is look at why young people in particular are offending at the rates they are and why they're ending up in jail, which is about the worst place for them to be. So you have to look at the root causes of why we've got, in particular, young men who feel left out by society, they feel life is hopeless, they're, they haven't got the skills they need to go back into society to make some meaningful contribution. So, but, I mean, I've spent most of my working life making programmes about young people and I care about young people so much because they're the future of this country. And I do think during the pandemic in particular, we let them down. Our schools were closed for too long, the teachers were slow to go back, and then when kids went back, they... And now we have very high truancy rates, so this is gonna, not going to help offending in the future. Going back to what we do about young people going to prison, we've got to support them with more teachers, more care in the community, for example, find the money for all the youth clubs and community centres that all got closed. Mm. We've got to get a lot more teachers with special skills in schools and then we've got to fund after-school clubs because at the moment kids are just being let out of school on well, the street. Brenda, obviously, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, I know, Kelly, that with your, one of the charities you, you work with, you have actually been into prisons and talked yeah. to these young people, mostly yeah. young men. Yeah. Um, and what is your take? Do you agree with Janet? Are they feeling hopeless? How well, do we stop them ending up in prison in the first place? Absolutely, what Janet said is 100% correct, but we've moved on a bit from there now. So what I'm seeing in, in, in terms of in prisons is that the landscape for crime has changed. So it used to be about being influenced, you know, by not having a, a, you know, a youth club to go to after school and therefore, you, you know, you could go down one route or the other. But now it's, the crime is becoming glamorised and social media is really charging that forward. There are so many platforms that, that allow this, this content to be used. I, I am, I'm, it, it infuriates me when I see influencers, and there are many out there that, that we're all aware of, using their platform in this negative sense. It's like a prank, you know, pranksters going yeah, and doing petty... Yeah, through shops. Yes, yes. Going, yeah. through, go, going through shops. And, 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 and also, in, it's, for me, it's inciting petty crime, and that's where it starts. And also, um, unfortunately, now, um, you know, some gang culture is seen as a, as a, as a work and a career trajectory. So age six, at six to eight, they are then targeted, those children children that are vulnerable, they are targeted and trained how to be runners. And then there's a trajectory. So you go from running, you then go to, you know, you then go to the next stage and then you go to owning your own business. And that's what it's seen as. So there's a clear trajectory for these but young people. But all as in drug business. Yeah, selling drugs and there's a clear trajectory drugs. for that. But, but unfortunately, the influencers that are doing positive things are, don't have as, 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 uh, what, what, what do I want to use the word? Well, they don't, I'm, they're not I'm as really cautious here. about this yeah. um, because I'm really, I'm really passionate about the lack of thought and due care that these, that these influencers are, are, are using. But they don't have as much presence and, and as big a voice as these pranksters. People who are... And it just influences. They, go, they, they influence them to do this and they influence them to do that. And also then there's the, the, we're talking about a prison service that's really overrun. And so therefore the, 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 the crimes are not actually being, um, are being dealt with in the way that we'd like them to be. The prison sentences aren't enough, people are getting away with things. So there's a whole host of, of, of elements that are coming together which are fueling crime and, well, I think, and like you encouraging said, they it need, to continue. They need positive role models, Brenda, and obviously um, your lovely Jamal was a hugely positive mm. role model. And I know that you're carrying on with 
his work. Yeah. So how, what do you need? What does your foundation need to well, help these young the, people? The thing is, I think what people need to do is listen to young people in the first place. You've got all these people putting these legislations down and we should do this and we should do that. Have you ever actually been to a community that's, that's going through what they're going through to go and see and speak to them? And we have spoken to them uh, with regards to setting up the trust and something that they need is a community hub to bring everybody together. You close all the community centres down, all that does is push the young people out onto the street somewhere. <laughs> They've got to do... They're doing something. So, you know, bring them back, show them the support, Show them the support, show them that they are part of something, just give them the self-belief and show them but that they're worth something. That, Janet? This is the other thing. But we say, should oh, not yeah, put a price on education. Yeah. I've got no I, come back, I come back to the fact... There is funding, there is funding, but the yeah. council seem to be digging up roads rather than putting it I, into the actual places. I, I, Everywhere you go, there's a road dug up. I come reason. back to the fact that education is priceless. We should be channelling all the money that we can in this country into support for the next generation. Absolutely, it should take priority over everything. It makes my blood boil that we have different priorities mm. to helping our children and helping this country's next generation get the skills they need, learn to read and write and have self-worth. Yes. Because at the moment they don't mm. have self-worth. And also treat them, teach them trades and yeah. skills. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it? Schemes start need to, policing you know, social media platforms. Mm. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. How annoying.